For the first time in history, doctors right here in the United States will battle the Ebola virus. Two patients are coming home, and here's what we know right now. One of the two American missionaries infected with Ebola will arrive from Africa tomorrow on a plane, and right there in front of that plane, you can see an airtight tent. It's the kind of isolation pod that will carry these patients here. And back in the hot zone in Africa tonight, soldiers are trying to prevent panic in the streets. We have team coverage on all of this, starting with ABC's chief medical editor, Dr. Richard Besser, former acting head of the CDC, who has tracked deadly diseases such as Ebola. Tonight, word those two missionaries stricken with Ebola, now stable enough to fly. Nancy Wrightbowl and Dr. Kent Brantley expected to be transported, one at a time, in a specially designed aircraft inside a disposable tent designed to protect the crew from the deadly virus. They will fly more than 5,000 miles from Liberia to the United States, landing at Dobbins Air Force Base in Georgia, then spirited to nearby Emory University Hospital, one of just four top-level biocontainment units in the country prepared to handle the nation's first ever case of Ebola. Our intent is to keep this contained and to maintain the safety of both the patients at this hospital as well as the general public. The patients will be brought to a secure unit, similar to this one at the University of Nebraska. This video demonstrates how infected patients could be transported on a tented gurney to isolate them. It's called an isopod. You can see by that you can have a patient and you can start an IV or examine them by using these gloves. At Emory, each patient will be tended by two specially trained nurses and four infectious disease experts, all suited up in taped on full body protective gear. This is the Emory isolation room. I will be one of the individuals who will be coming into direct contact with the patients. I have no concerns about uh, either my personal health or the health of the other health care workers who will be working in that unit. Here at CDC Command Center, the nation's top experts monitoring it all. People are scared. Why should America let people back in who have Ebola? Well, first, we really want to stop the outbreak where it's happening. That's going to protect people, caregivers, and the U.S. best. But I really hope that people's fears don't overtake their compassion. Remember, Ebola can only be spread by close contact with body fluids. They have no fears of an epidemic here. The CDC will also be sending 50 disease detectives to Western Africa, where the death toll has soared to more than 700. In Liberia, empty streets on the capital. The military deployed as panic rises. Disinfectant sprayed in public places. Hand washing stations up outside supermarkets. Doctors Without Borders today calling the epidemic out of control. Their staff pushed to the limits. Here in Atlanta, the first patient with Ebola ever to be treated in America arrives tomorrow. At Emory, they tell me that they're ready and that these volunteers deserve to come home and receive the best treatment that they can. Diane? And our Dr. Richard Besser will be right there. Thank you, Rich. And next on this story tonight, you're going to meet another American doctor who worked in the same hot zone with one of the infected missionaries. He has placed himself in quarantine right here at home. Today, from isolation in Tennessee, he spoke with ABC's Ron Claiborne about the days watching for any possible symptoms of the disease. This was Dr. Alan Jameson at the airport three weeks ago, suitcase in hand, departing as a volunteer to treat Ebola patients in Liberia. And this is Dr. Jameson today. We are Skyping with him because he's in complete isolation. He quarantined himself in his own home in Morristown, Tennessee, when he returned three days ago. With this disease, I am just being cautious. Dr. Jameson is concerned he may have been exposed to the deadly disease in Liberia. So when his organization, Medical Teams International, sent him back home because of security concerns, he went straight to his house, even keeping his distance from his own daughter, who met him at the airport, not touching anyone. Now he is home alone. No one allowed in, and he doesn't leave. He monitors his own temperature twice a day for fever, one of the earliest symptoms of Ebola. I feel in excellent health. I'm feeling very comfortable. How confident are you that you have not contracted it? I'm very confident at this point in time because, uh, because of the period of time I've been without symptoms from the last uh, exposure. Dr. Jameson, a retired pediatrician who's done previous volunteer work in Somalia and Haiti, wore full protective gear every time he was with an infected patient. He last worked with Ebola patients last Saturday at the same hospital where fellow American doctor Kent Brantley was infected. 
Dr. Jameson intends to remain inside his house for up to 21 days since his last contact with an Ebola patient. That is the longest known incubation period for the virus. And he says he's willing, even once, to go back to the danger zone. I would have no problems with returning. This, this is uh, a mission I've chosen in life. I'm, uh, my mission is to be of uh, maximum service to others in, in what uh, capabilities I can. And Diane, let me show you a photo of Dr. Jameson with his wife, Kathy. Right now, she is out of town traveling. Dr. Jameson says she will decide for herself when it's okay to come home. And again, so far, he's showing no signs of symptoms of the Ebola, which is very good at this stage. The incredible courage of these doctors were reminded again, Ron. And you said it's about two more weeks now. Watching about two and more waiting. weeks, but he should, be, he should be safe. All right. Thank you so much, Ron. And we know that you have so many questions about the outbreak. And tonight, right after this program, we want you to know that our Dr. Richard Besser is going to be answering your questions. So visit ABC News Facebook page with all your questions and concerns.